So I've got some good news. We've done $10 million in a week. Oh, we're backing up already. Well done, guys. Uh, good. Very good. Very good. I'm excited for the update. The social growth's good. We'll do an update. Alrighty, so we've got some good news. But before I get into sales and how it's all going, just wanted to say a huge thank you to all of the customers that are supporting us over this period and have supported us forever. Audi has such a strong community. Often, I don't like talking about sales outwardly simply because it makes us seem bigger than we actually are. And compared to people like Primark and Kmart and stuff like that, every single sale, every single customer that shops with us actually means the world of difference. We just get so happy with all of our customers. Like every single sale means so much. The reason why I do talk about sales outwardly is one, because I like to teach. Two, because if I don't say the sales and I don't use that in the titles, nobody will click. The way that YouTube algorithm works, I need to actually say that stuff so that people click and I can actually do my purpose, which I really, really enjoy teaching. So without further ado, on Tuesday, we did the 1.2 million. Then on Wednesday, we did the 1.8 million. Then Thursday, we did 1.6 million. Friday, we did 1.4 million. And then Saturday, we did 1.4 million. And then Sunday, we did 1.4 million again. So we are well on our way to our target. How does that happen? Three months ago, we were tracking our sales year on year, which is a really important thing in e-commerce because that's how much stock you need to buy and you're trying to predict sales. And me and my CEO and the team were getting together and we're like, what can we actually sell? And we thought that we could maybe do 30, 40 million and then suddenly sales collapsed. It just wasn't working. We thought that the Nordic pipeline last year was just such a big mover of units last year and we misforecasted that. But we, the team rallied and we started to work really, really hard to make sure that we could deliver the product in the right way. And we worked hard on marketing and we just all oh, really, really came together and we've actually turned that around. So we're actually looking more likely that we're going to hit our original forecast of 38 million. So the 20 million was kind of like a really almost bad result for us, but uh, things were going really well. So I don't want this to just be about us. I want this to be about you as well. I want to talk about the ways that you as an entrepreneur, as an e-commerce entrepreneur, or wannabe e-commerce entrepreneur, the lessons that you need to learn to have a successful e-commerce business during Black Friday. So the first tip that I have is 100% make sure that you have the right team and processes in place to handle the scale. So I think it was three years ago, we had never actually had a proper Black Friday where we were in stock for the UD. And that's simply because we didn't have the right team and processes to handle the scale. I had an operations team that had never worked in e-commerce before. They didn't know how to do proper merchandise planning. And we were constantly, we never even had proper forecasts that were based on historic results, as well as uh, actually predicting certain trends like COVID. Is that going to impact our sales positively or negatively? So make sure that you've got the right people in the right roles and if you need help with that, you can just message me and ask me depending on your size. So another key thing to really understand is concepts of marketing. So if you haven't read Influence by Robert Cialdini, you need to. You need to understand how to structure your offers and your business and your product based on certain principles such as comparison, such as scarcity. These common principles in marketing will really, really help you. And you need to be constantly testing different types of offers throughout the year to see how people behave for them. Because remember, you are competing against big companies, against people that may even be cheaper and less quality than you. So you need to structure it in a way that is exciting for customers, that gives customers value as well, and just constantly be iterating and testing those offers. It was only just recently that we were gearing up for Black Friday. We invested $20 million in stock. We were all really excited. The whole Melbourne team was actually in Adelaide as well. And we were all catching up, um, talking about strategies and whatnot for the, the coming weeks. Then we got a message. We're all sitting around the table, having some drinks, and we got a message and it was like, 
all of your product has been seized by the government. And we're like, what? What is going on? We found out that the 3PL had improperly filed a certain paperwork that was required to hold our goods. So for the next week, we were just on calls until 2 a.m. trying to get the goods cleared, trying to explain the situation. I was talking to people like people in the Australian government that had representatives in that country and it was just the most chaotic thing. It was just before that as well, Royal Mail actually went on strike and we had, there was viral videos of piles and piles of UDIs backed up and customers were abusing us, emailing us, and it was literally nothing we can do. The point is Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong, will go wrong. The team needs to be resilient. The team needs to know problems are going to arise and you can work through it, but you also need to make sure that cash flow, inventory, all of those kind of things, you're not so leveraged to the point where if something does go wrong, you're going to have to pretty much wipe out your business. So when I first launched Calming Blankets, we did like 10 million in its first year and we we're doing millions in profit and eventually the udi overtook it and calming blankets really just became a shell of what it once was and this brings me to my probably it's not even a black friday tip but just more of like it is essential that you develop a product flywheel and the product flywheel is really prevalent in brands like udi or gymshark where you're constantly able to iterate on your existing product set and create products that are exciting for customers. There's another great brand called Quadlock and they're based in Australia. They create iPhone cases that lock into certain situations so that they, and they're doing you know, hundreds of millions. So you might get a bike quad lock and your case actually clicks onto that. And then you go to your car and it clicks onto that as well. So thinking about how you can create iterative products so that you can com consistently compound month on month, year on year and engage those audiences again. In previous years, we would always be confused about what products were dropping, when the promotions were launching, all of these kind of things. And the team was just constantly confused. And this is where one of the most important things as you're scaling comes into place, which is a marketing calendar and also trade meetings or weekly meetings. And this is where you get all the team together and you use sales and your forecasts and also the marketing calendar when promotions start and stop to discuss if you're on track and you're hitting your expectations. That communication will then create transparency across the organization expectations and it'll really allow people to actually push promotions forward or uh, push promotions back depending on what your actual objectives are. Alrighty, we are back in Adelaide and we are heading to a warehouse to a uh, hopefully help save a business. So I've got a production studio over here from Sydney. We're going to be producing pretty much a documentary um, trying to save this, uh, this person's business who he's made some mistakes, he's been taken advantage of and I really, really want to help document the process so that maybe other people will help him as well by documenting the journey. In terms of like investing heavily into production um, to create these YouTube videos. You know, people have seen Amang Gadzi and some of those are basically documentaries that are better than Netflix productions sometimes. I believe strongly that in five years, as YouTube and creators become more talented and YouTube takes more viewership share, that these videos won't just be distributed on YouTube. They, all of these streaming platforms, Apple, Netflix, Stan, all of these people are now competing with, and, and content is in high demand and they are buying content very, very quickly. As soon as Apple starts investing lots and lots of money and Amazon starts investing lots of money to compete, then you know that there's gonna be demand for content. And I do think that people will wanna start watching creators on those kind of platforms. So I wanna explore a high production value as well. And I think that this is a great uh, opportunity to do so. When Russia and the US were fighting in the space race and it was just basically the whole nation were behind both of them to try to beat each other they were constantly trying to create innovations. When the US were trying to get to space, they were really, really stuck on a really technical problem, which is you can't get a pen to work in space. 
because the ink needs to push down with gravity and to actually apply to the page. And they spent millions and millions on a prototype to actually create the pen. And you know what the Russians did? They just used a pencil. So it shows that you don't need to be super, super creative to actually solve these problems. And sometimes more money makes you think in different ways. So if you're thinking about doing a startup and you think you need money, you probably don't. Hey mate, good to meet in person. Hey, how's it going? How's it going? Nice to meet you. Yeah. Hello mate, good. how you feeling? Yeah. You good? Feeling good, how are you, you good? doing? You're a bit nervous last night. I yeah, think. I was a little bit. <laughs> I've never been on a production like this. So. Neither have I actually, it's that's from Shark Tank. We had pretty even amounts of steady growth and then this year's obviously a bit different. So mm -hmm. we moved into here, expecting that trend to continue dropped off at the start of the year mm -hmm. and it's just kind of got worse and worse now, yeah unfortunately but all right well don't tell me too much just because we might want to do it on camera yeah. proper camera not that camera <laughs> We did an Instagram story and there was 200 people applied in like two minutes for me to come in and help save the business. But Billy had the, the most moving story. It was probably one of the harder businesses to actually fix. Um, you know, for cafes, restaurants, those kind of things, I can just create viral menus and I'll get a huge crowd there and fix a lot of the operational issues. But um, that being said, you know, late boy, he's got a moving story as well. He probably needed the most help because um, of the situation we was in, so that's why we picked Billy. Howdy, I was just wondering, do you guys have the, is it the Suron uh, electric bikes? Yeah, we do, yeah. Would that fit in a G-Wagon in the back if I put the seats down? This is going to end so badly. <laughs> and I guess my final point that I really wanted to finish on with this video is that I was at Simon Beard's, I don't know, $50 million plus mansion, it would be more than that, in Gold Coast just the other day. And I was sitting, uh, looking over his boat, his million dollar boat, and I immediately created this need for all of the things that he had. And it's not jealousy, it's inspiration. But as soon as that happens, you instantly lose all peace and nothing is good enough. You are watching this video where I am saying that we are doing a massive amount of sales and you're going to ask yourself, is what I'm doing enough? And why aren't I able to achieve what he's doing? When realistically, you are doing something amazing, even if it's at $1,000 over your Black Friday weekend, you're on the trajectory to change your life. So I want you to leave the ego, leave the comparison, and just enjoy the ride as well, because one day you will get to those levels and you'll look back and these will be the, the funnest, funnest times of your life.